Well, the wheel on the back of this brush hog is seized up. It won't move at all. And I've heated this up with a torch. I've tried to get it off before. I think I've made it worse. Now, the reason I say I think I made it worse is because after I worked on it, I couldn't get the washers over the top of this. So what I think I've done is I've mushroomed the top of this out. Um, once I heated it up with a torch, I was hitting on it with a hammer. Well, I heated the whole thing up with a torch. But anyway, this is definitely a larger diameter than what it used to be. I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheel off, get it out of the way. Gotta be careful, there's a bearing on the inside of there. Don't wanna lose it. I think this can go up about a quarter of an inch. I'm just gonna get it up the rest of the way. I'm just gonna take a grinder. I'm gonna grind this down a little bit to try to make it smaller. I don't think this is important as long as this in here is still nice and round. All right, I think I've got the shaft where it's less than an inch and a half in diameter. Looks good. So at the very bottom of the shaft where I couldn't grind it, it is right at an inch and a half. So I think I've got that ground down enough. The test is the washers and the washers fit now. So that definitely helped, but this is still stuck. Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today I am trying to fix our seven foot brush hog so that we can do some mowing. The back wheel on this thing is locked up and I've already tried to fix this once and failed. So this rear wheel is seized. It, it won't rotate. And as you spin the tractor around, all it does is just dig into the ground sideways and just tears everything up. And I, I want to try to get this fixed before I do a bunch of mowing. So I, last time I ended up, I tried heating this up with a torch to expand the tube so that I could get the, you know, this, this, this wheel assembly out. And what I ended up doing, I think I mushroomed the top of it. But this is in there pretty good. And we're going to try to get it out again today. This time I'm, I'm going to try to not use heat. I've already tried that once. I'm going to try something else today. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just knock this down just a little bit. So we're going to try to push this thing out with this hydraulic puller. This is a 15 ton hydraulic puller. I actually tried this the other day when it was heated up and it, and I'd already mushroomed the top of it out, but it wouldn't push it out. I mean, it, it took everything it had and it would not press this out. So I'm hoping today with it all cool, I'm hoping that it will press it out. I think it's gonna work, at least part way. I'm not sure exactly what just happened there. Well, it appears that uh, something has just messed up on this hydraulic puller. It's not working. So I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll get a regular pull puller, see if we can get it with a regular puller. That's very disappointing that that's not working. Tiny, that thing is tight. It's crazy tight. It's not going anywhere. All right, we're we're putting downward pressure on that. I'm gonna try to twist this, see if it moves, if I can get it to rotate. Oh my gosh.
Yep, it definitely moved. Keep doing that, I guess. It's crazy how stuck that thing is. <laughs> oh my goodness, that thing's stuck. <laughs> I just stripped out the puller. It just stripped out the threads on the puller. I moved it about an eighth of an inch with all that. I've got that far to go. I got like another six inches to push that out. Well, I think I'm gonna have to try to drive this thing out. I really didn't want to. I think that'll work. This is old bent up PTO shaft. We'll just cut off some of that and use it. That really sucks that both of my pullers are broke. So on this puller, there's an area of threads that we stripped out. It's not a very good puller, but I'm gonna put a socket in there. And hopefully that's gonna get me to a height where I'm in a different set of threads. So I'm just gonna go a little easier this time. Just put a little pressure on it. Just put a little pressure on it and we're just gonna turn it back and forth. Go slow. And I can see it loosened up. Tells me we're getting somewhere. It's turning easier. That makes me believe we're getting somewhere. Goodness. Well, I'm definitely glad that I didn't give up trying to get this out. I almost did. This thing was in there just crazy tight. I mean, it was just crazy how tight or how much that was seized in there. It just did not want to move at all. Now, the, this part right here, um, it does look dirty. It looks a little rough. So we're going to take some emery cloth and we're just gonna uh, you know, go over this and we're gonna take some metal off of here and try to smooth it out a little bit, try to get it to where it fits in and out of here the way it should. Now this side, just from the look of it, this side actually doesn't look too bad. It's, the, it's this portion that looks like it needs some work. So we're just gonna put that in a vise and work on it with some emery cloth until it fits. Well, it appears that this had a bunch of grime built up on this. So I ended up taking the wire wheel and putting and running that over it and cleaning it up. And once I've got it down back to the metal, it actually slides and turns and everything the way that it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run some, some fine emery cloth over it just to polish it up a little bit more. And then I think we can put it back together. So one thing we gotta do before we put this together is this hole is egg shaped from us beating on this and using the, the puller pressing down on this. So I'm about to put that in the mill and drill that back out to make it the right size. And look at that, it moves just like it should. Our washers go over the top, and then we just gotta get this roll pin put in. There we go. So we got a new grease cert to put in here. We'll make sure this takes grease before we put this all back together. Oh yeah, a lot better than the 
the last one. There we go. That looks good. So that's the bearing, the roller bearing that goes inside of this wheel. And then I think there's a couple washers too. There we go. Well, you can see now that we got it all greased up, thing spins like it's supposed to. So last time I gave up. I gave on, up on it last time. I ended up just putting a pry bar in there. I got it to where the wheel was straight. And then I went out and mowed. And every time I needed to make a turn, I just lifted up the brush hog so that the wheel wouldn't dig into the ground when I turned. And I still got quite a bit out there that I need to mow. So tomorrow, it's dark right now. So tomorrow when I get home from work, We'll go out and there's a lot of tall grass out there that some places we probably haven't mowed all year. I'd like to get it mowed down before winter time and at least get everything looking halfway decent before winter. So we'll be back tomorrow and we'll do some brush hogging. Well, just like every brush hog I've ever owned, this one leaks oil. I bought this two gallon jug of the cheap gear oil because it just runs right through. But man, this jug cost me almost $50 the other day. That's crazy. I think it's definitely gonna be worth trying to replace the seals in this, maybe this winter. All right, gearbox is full of oil. Let's go do some brush hogging. <clears throat> All right, we got the first area mode. So this is a hillside and it gets fairly steep as it goes to that side. It actually has a fairly good drop off. So I don't wanna go any farther that way. We've got 18 chestnut trees planted here. That's what you see in these white tubes. And we're just down from the pig pen is just right up there at the top. And you can see the bank barn and the pasture is right over here. So I've got another place down here we need to mow where we, we, we made a bunch of ruts trying to fix a culvert earlier this spring and, it, and the ruts were so deep Rebecca couldn't mow it with the zero turn so it's never been mowed so I'm going to try to get that knocked down real quick and then we'll head up to the front of the property.
All right, I think I got everywhere mowed that I wanted to, and all those places had not been mowed all year long. And you could tell that they had grown higher than the tractor in some spots. And there was actually a lot of like saplings and small trees and stuff that were starting to grow up. And uh, we got everything knocked back down and the brush hog worked fine. So I know when I was driving it, I could see the, sometimes when I would pick it up, the wheel would just sit there and spin. So I know that it is working the way it should and it's moving freely now. And I can't believe how hard it was to, to get that wheel freed up. I mean, this was our second attempt. I didn't film the first attempt, but this was our, my, my second attempt at trying to get this wheel fixed. So at least that's taken care of. I think the only thing left on the brush hog is maybe this winter we'll try to replace the seal in the gearbox and probably sharpen the blades at the same time. So this area right here, I think we've got somewhere over 60 chestnut trees planted over here and then back that direction. And um, it is very hard to mow these areas. And that's because I've, I've planted these trees so close together. So the trees are like 15 feet apart from each other and then the rows are 20 feet apart. And I did that so that it would feel, that's, that's a very close spacing. I did that so it would be, feel more like a wooded area or like, you know, a forest or something instead of just like an orchard. I wanted them to be touching each other and I wanted to be completely shaded when they, when they get mature. And um, that makes it very difficult to try to mow and not hit any of this with the brush hog and then cut one of your trees off or knock one down with the bucket of your tractor. I actually hit um, one of these T-posts that was holding them up and bent that T-post up and I had to bend it back. And um, that's, <laughs> that's what happens when you're trying to mow in here. You end up eventually tearing something up. So I've put it off all year just because of that reason. I kind of dread coming in here trying to mow. Once it gets so tall, you kind of you know you have to come in here with a tractor and mow it. And um, so I've just kind of put it off and haven't wanted to mow between all these tubes. But at least we got it knocked down now and it's good enough now we can come back in here with a zero turn and we can trim all this up and we can get it looking better. And since it's fall and winter's coming, it'll look good for like the next six months. It hasn't looked very good for the last six months, but at least it'll look good for the next six months. So I'm, gl I'm glad that we finally got this done. It's been needing to be done for a while. But I think that's going to be it for today's video. It was a long night last night trying to fix the, uh, the brush hog. And um, the sun's already heading down tonight. It's already starting to set, and it'll be time for evening chores. And uh, I've been getting supper. I haven't been getting supper till about 8 o'clock at night. So... I think that's going to be it for today, today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.